In CenterPoint Payroll, while setting up payroll liabilities, you are asked to identify the vendor in which that liability is paid. So sometimes you're writing out a check to that vendor, and other times you are simply using that vendor to record the payment of a liability that might have been made electronically. To create new payroll vendors, you would go to Setup and Names. When you come to this screen, you're going to be presented with a list of vendors that have already been set up. If you haven't set up any of them yet, then that list should be blank. To create a new payroll vendor, we would go ahead and click the New button. And that's going to take us over to the Detail tab, which has a series of sub-tabs underneath it. General, Address, Custom Name Fields, Email Print, and ACH payments. For payroll vendors, the only tab that we need is the general tab. If you are integrated with our accounting, then you may be using the other tabs and those tabs are addressed in other videos under the accounting section. When setting up a new vendor, the first thing to select is whether or not this vendor is a business or an individual. Okay, if it is a business, then the field down below abbreviation here is simply a company name. If you click individual, you'll see that it changes that field to last name, first name, middle initial. So um, choosing this format here determines the format of the name field. Now, it really doesn't matter whether you leave these marked as both a customer or a vendor, but really these are only going to be vendors. So you can go ahead and uncheck customer. And if you want, you could right click there and set that as a default so that it won't be marked again when you create a new one. But it doesn't even matter really if you do go ahead and leave it marked. Okay. Next to the vendor is a detail button, but if um, for payroll only, there's actually no detail forms available. There would only be a detail form available there if um, this were a accounting vendor and you were integrated with our accounting. You don't need to worry about the employee or salesperson check marks. You won't be using those here on this screen. You have the ability to go ahead and create a abbreviation for your vendors. It's not necessary, it's not required, um, but if you wanted to have all your vendors have an abbreviation, you could go ahead and enter one in here. In fact, if you want your abbreviations to be unique for all of your vendors, you can also right click on the field and tell the system whether or not you want it to warn if it's a duplicate vendor or even say that there's no duplicates allowed. Mine is set to allow duplicates. I'm going to go ahead and put in a abbreviation for my vendor. From there then, you um, are presented with the opportunity to put your vendors into a group. All this is used for is for when you're filtering reports, you could quickly um, filter a group of vendors that you wanted to do a report on by putting them in a group. Now, if you happen to be um, integrated with our accounting, you might want to set up a group of vendors just called payroll vendors. So I'm going to create this group and call it payroll vendors and click save. So all I did was click the new button and it took me to that um, screen and then click OK. And now I have a group called payroll vendors. And as I create each one of my payroll vendors, I can put them into that group. And that easily, that'll help me if I was um, uh, looking for a series of transactions that were payments to my payroll vendors, I could easily select all of my payroll vendors then. From there, it's going to go to the company field. And I'm going to go in and put in a new insurance company that we're working with called Healthy Choices. Okay, now if I'm making my payment electronically, this is all I need to enter it in because obviously, if I'm not writing out a check, I don't need any of the additional information that is included down here at the bottom. If I am writing out a check to that vendor, then I do have the ability to put in a contact name 
and then the address. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 1066 West Addison. And it's going to drop down here to the zip code. It'll fill in the city and state after I go ahead and type in the zip code. It'll give me a list of city and states that um, are available there. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then if I want to include any other contact information about this vendor, such as phone, fax, email, I can go ahead and include that. Um, there really isn't a need for going ahead and putting in any kind of federal tax ID for the vendor. Since this is payroll only, we wouldn't be going ahead and sending 1099s to this vendor. So we likely are not going to go ahead and mark that we're going to issue a 1099 to this vendor. However, if you are integrated um, with our accounting package um, and you do need to send 1099s to the vendor that you're setting up, this is where you would put in the vendor's tax ID number. The state tax ID number is not required. Then you would need to mark that you issue a 1099 for that vendor. Okay, but that would be only if you were integrated with our accounting package. Below there is a memo field. The memo field actually prints on any checks that are written out to this vendor. So if this is a vendor that you don't pay electronically and you have to physically write a check for them and you want a memo to come up on the check like such as um, perhaps that vendor has an account number of yours that they want to print on the check each time, you can go ahead and put it in the field right here. And um, that will then print on each check written to that vendor. Down below is the ability to activate or deactivate a vendor. So if um, you wanted to, if this is a vendor that you're no longer using later on, if you come back in and edit them, you could click on the active status button and you would see the companies in your database and you could choose to activate or deactivate this vendor for all. You could deactivate it for all companies by clicking the deactivate all, or you could deactivate it for a single company by clicking um, just taking the check mark out. Um, this is, um, I only have one company in this database, so that's why we're only seeing one company there. I wanna leave mine active because this is a new vendor for us. Next to that then too is an additional notes button. The additional notes button would allow you to put in notes about this vendor and it stays with this vendor record. I'm just gonna type in a note. I'm gonna put a timestamp on it though. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a note. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, um, go ahead and put in that note and click OK. And when you do have a note in on a vendor, this button instead of being an additional notes button actually says Edit Notes, and those notes stay with this particular vendor's record. Okay, the last thing that we might want to go ahead and set up for these vendors is. Um, when you're creating new vendors, there might be fields of information that you never use, like perhaps you're not gonna use the group field. <clears throat> then you can take them out of the tab order. So as you're tabbing through each one of these fields here, you could take um, certain fields out of the tab order by going to options and setting tab steps. So I can think of a number of fields that I would never need to select here um, for payroll vendors. Um, for example, um, I may never go ahead and select the customer detail button, so I could uncheck that. I probably am never going to go ahead and um, change the is customer, is employee, is salesperson, or is vendor checkboxes. So I don't need to stop at those. Um, I'm not going to be putting, um, uh, marking them as 1099 vendors. Um, so I don't need its state tax ID or a federal tax ID either. So there's a number of different fields that I'm just never going to use for these payroll vendors. So I can go ahead and take them out of the tab order. Keep in mind though, that if you are integrated with our accounting package, that um, those would be fields that you might use for your accounting vendors. Um, but other than that, if you're just using payroll, then you don't need those for the payroll vendors. 
Okay, then just one last thing down here at the bottom is the ability, um, if you have a scanner set up, you can scan in documents related to this particular vendor by clicking the scan button here. You first need to set up your scanner by going to file and scanners, and you would need to add your scanner, which scanner you're using. And then once that scanner is set up to scan in a document, um, related to this vendor, you would simply need to click the scan button. If it is a document that is already somewhere on your hard drive and you just want to link it to this particular vendor, you can click on this button here and it would allow you to attach a document by clicking attach and then browsing out for where that document might be located and then attaching it to this vendor and then it would stay with this vendor. I'm not going to attach a document to mine, but I wanted to show you where you could go ahead and do that. Now, that is really all we need for payroll vendors in CenterPoint. The additional tabs here would not be tabs that really you would use for just payroll vendors. They're more associated with um, your vendors if you are integrated with our accounting package. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and that goes ahead and it adds that vendor to the list. To edit the vendor, I can simply just go ahead and either click the edit button down here at the bottom or I can double click on the vendor and it would allow me to go in there and make any changes to that vendor. And then when I'm done, I could go ahead and click save. I won't be able to delete the vendor if the vendor has already been used in a, some sort of a payment. Um, and um, if I'm setting up another vendor with the same information, such as maybe the same address, and I just wanna copy the existing vendor, that's what the copy button is for. And if I happen to accidentally set up a vendor more than one time, I can use the combine button to go ahead and combine those vendors. That is payroll vendors.